Zulabrate. Now I'm all for puns, but I think that's stretching it a bit. Buongiorno everyone, Clans Mahoney here, your source for SoCal fun and excitement. And in today's exploration, it's the Los Angeles Zoo that's celebrating its 50 years in operation. Let's go inside and see how these animals feel about being here for 50 years. If you see a harbor seal resting at the bottom of the pool, don't be alarmed. Harbor seals can nap underwater for up to 15 minutes. And this harbor seal is just relaxing in the pool, doing his daily neck stretches. In August 2005, park employees spotted Reggie the alligator swimming at the Harbor Regional Park. Shortly after the sighting, authorities learned that Reggie had been dumped in the 56-acre lake by two San Pedro men. Oh, that's just my pet alligator, Reggie. Man. That's a big alligator, and to think this was found in a pond or a lake here in Southern California. The Zelig Zoo statue. Fifteen elephant and lion statues originally joined the entrance to the first zoo in Los Angeles. The Zelig Zoo in Lincoln Park, founded by Colonial William Zelig, a film producer from Chicago. Zelig Zoo has many animals that were featured in films of the era and were used as location for movies such as the first Tarzan film. That's very interesting. I didn't know that they used to use the animals from movies to display here at the zoo. Meerkats thrive on a diet primarily insects, including beetles and the larvae of beetles and butterflies. Of course meerkats love to eat bugs. Slimy yet satisfying. This is the meerkat being filmed. He's showing me his best side. He's like, get this side. I look best in this side. The zoo is a fairly good size. It's not as big as, say, the San Diego Zoo. But if you need to get around to the upper parts and you don't want to walk, because it's a lot of walking, they have a safari shuttle you can take. Here's a map of the LA Zoo, and this way we've got snakes, koalas, gorillas, orangutans, elephants, zebras, food, handicapped people, and chimpanzees. And that way we've got apparently a mountain, a carousel, more elephants, people pointing at stuff, more handicapped people, cheetahs, hippos, tigers, and rhinos. So we're gonna get some relief from the heat of Southern California, and we're gonna enter the lair. Snakes, why did it have to be snakes? Saintly serpent, this small, brightly colored serpent is not dangerous to humans. In some countries, it's regarded as a symbol of good luck, and it's kept in temples and in I'm trees. I'm sorry, even if people do worship it, I do not want that thing in a tree near my home. Do you guys know why they're poisonous? It's not that the frogs are actually poisonous. The, the bugs they eat. So when they bring them into zoos like this, they don't feed them the poisonous bugs, so technically they're not poisonous. Wow, when I first walked in, I thought this thing was a log, but look at that. It's actually a giant salamander. One of the rare snakes in the world, this striking viper was discovered in a remote and isolated area of Mexico in 1979. Three were collected for breeding, and all currently in captivity are descendants of that trio. This creature is called the Bushmaster. What it does is it bites you and injects its venom, then it lets go. Then it lets the poison do its work, and when you're done, then it slowly swallows you whole. This thing that looks like a rock is actually a turtle. It's called the Mata Mata. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But what I also notice is, look at how its butt is continuously jiggling. Even though it's resting, it's practicing its twerking. This is the Cape Cobra. It has one of the most deadly venoms in the world, and its venom is thick and syrupy-like and can be fatal really fast. Now, the thing about this creature is that its head and its tail look the same, and it can apparently run backwards as fast as it can run forwards. So sometimes prey will catch the tail thinking they're catching the head. This is the Santa Catalina Island Rattlesnake. While this rattlesnake is one of the largest, it is more laid back than the most. Many will rarely rattle or strike, preferring to move along instead. This is a Sonoran giant centipede. This venomous hunter can eat breakfast with its front legs while killing lunch with its back legs. It's extremely agile, active, and an active hunter. So what does it do with the middle? Does, is that how it gets dinner? Wow, look at the size of this thing. This is a very rarely seen member of the crocodile family called a Thomas Thomas. I've always been fascinated by these things. Now. They mainly eat fish, but they'll pretty much eat anything. Man, that reptile house is really fun, even though it had a lot of snakes, and I hate snakes. But I'm going to sit down, because I'm pretty tired right now. Man, this thing is pretty scaly. Oh well. Anyways, I hope to God that I never see another sn snake any anytime soon. What do you think, Mr. Snake? Now this is very interesting. Look, you don't see this very often. Just an empty enclosure. This is where they used to have the seals and sea lions before they moved them up to the front of the park. 
Need a rest? Pull up a tail. Notice the long thick tail of the kangaroo. It acts like a fifth leg. Kangaroos will use their tails to help stabilize and push them along with walking. He's got the right idea for a day like today. He's like, it's too hot. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit here and relax and let you guys watch me. His main devils have bone crushing teeth which can consume mammals, birds, carrion, dead decaying animals. Come on buddy. Move a little faster. Turn into a tornado and spin around. And make a bunch of weird things like blah, 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 blah. Next up, we're gonna see the Dragons of Komodo. A feast fit for a king. Komodo monitors are not only ambush hunters, but scavengers that can detect carrion, dead meat, more than five miles away. Deer, boar, and young Komodos are their primary staples, but Komodos also feed on birds, snakes, water buffalo, and horses. Komodos are capable of killing animals 15 times their weight and consuming 8% of their body weight in one meal. Look at this rock wildly. He's unsure of what's going on. He's like, I want these leaves, but I don't want Charlie over there to come get them for me. Castaway's favorite food is fruit, but since the castaway can't fly, it has to wait until the fruit falls to the forest floor. Sometimes castaways use the bony cassock on the top of its head to dig up insects, fungus, and roots. Man, this is one giant scary looking bird. It almost doesn't even look real. To me, it looks like a puppet. Like, this is should be something out of the Jim Henson Company. Confused about the striped zebra find them attractive. There are many theories as to why the zebra is striped. One states that the stripes confuse lions by blending into the herd with a large mass instead of one individual. Another says that the stripes serve as camouflage. See, that zebra's attracted by his stripes. Look, he's like, oh my god, your black and white combination is so great. Come over here. They are way more than meets the eye. Hyrax are more closely related to elephants than they are to the rodents they resemble. They use outside temperatures to regulate their body heat like a reptile. They can often be seen basking in the sun on cool days. Keeping yourself cool by moving your internal temperature around like a lizard. Like ghosts, pronghorns silently blend into the desert landscape, making them almost invisible. Not antelope or deer, they are the ancient species all of their own. These unique animals are found only in the harsh deserts of Baja, California. Shy and rare. Pronghorns follow rain to find food in an unforgiving landscape. Do you have trouble finding food here, buddy? I know it says you follow rain to find food and water, but this is California, so that can't be easy to find, what with it never raining here at all. So these are African wild dogs. And while I know they look like hyenas, they're actually a species all of their own. They're also called Cape hunting dogs. These are black-haired weavers. The birds are dishing on the latest bird gossip. Did you hear what Bethany Wing did? I can't believe she did that. My husband's out foraging for food and she does that? If I, were, if I were her husband, I would leave her and go to a different nest. This is called the Mountain Bongo. To satisfy their intense appetite for salt, bongos will sometimes eat burned wood from lightning killed trees. Lord almighty, their cholesterol must be so high from eating all that salt. But I know what he's thinking. I really need some salt right now. Do they have AA for animals? Animals Anonymous. If so, maybe that they should hold an intervention with this bongo and his salt addiction because I'm sure it's out of hand. He's going out late. He's not telling anyone where he's going. He's constantly getting salt and it's getting to be a problem. Did you know that lions have a social life that is very different from most cats? Lions live in a group called prides. A pride may contain as many as 40 lions, a dominant male, younger males, female lionesses, and cubs. I wonder how, how often they break into catchy songs about their place in the world. Look at how this giraffe is just hogging the water fountain, and the one behind it's like, come on man, you've drinking enough for all of us. Chimpanzee in danger? When people and wild animals both need land, the ones with the chainsaw usually wins. It's a tragedy for the chimpanzees who simply can't move to another place. Well, it's a pretty simple solution to that answer. We've seen it in the Planet of the Apes moves. Just give the chimps some chainsaws. It'll be fantastic. Look, these chimps are participating in a group hug. Wait. At least I hope that's a group hug. Keeney and Drew are wearing special GPS bracelets that are helping researchers learn more about how elephants and zoos spend their time. And here's a picture of what their ankle bracelets look yeah, like. Let's be honest, those elephants had some legal troubles and unfortunately now they're on house arrest so they can't leave their enclosure because the ankle will go off and send the cops here. White elephants. White elephants symbolize good fortune and spiritual purity in the Buddhist religion. Souls can pass on into the animals after death. A white elephant is among the most enlightened places a soul can rest. If I could pass on and become an animal, I would become a manatee. 
Because I would love to just slowly float through the rivers and oceans, just minding my own business, just eating some lettuce. I'm not trying to bug anyone. That's the life for me. Oh, Lord. Look, he's going to the waterfall. He's going to recreate the scene from the Jungle Cruise. This little area is called the Red Ape Rainforest. Look at this orangutan. He's like, oh, come on in, guys. How you doing? There's an orangutan just sitting there, deep in thought. Betty's probably excited for the new season of Game of Thrones. So this is a red crown mangabe, and he's from Africa, as most of them are. And he is severely disappointed in the lack of respect these, he's hearing from these kids today. Especially the one who was tired of walking and didn't want to use his legs. And his mom said to him, you should be thankful that you have legs to use because not all kids have them. Tell me what you're eating. Man, this guy looks so concerned. We're about to enter the lemur exhibit and look how this lemur is just completely shocked that someone took his picture. What? I wasn't ready. Wild lemurs are found only on the island of Madagascar. Although they have a dog-like face, their long bushy tail, mobile limbs, grasping hands and feet, and digits, fingers and toes, bearing nails, make them a primate. This is the Madagascar radiated tortoise. It is the mo considered the most beautiful of all the star tortoises, and the people that live on the island of Madagascar do not hunt these creatures because of their gentle nature. And this guy is just walking around in circles. He's thinking about something, so he's pacing. Hey. No, 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 don't go in there. You don't know what's in there. Don't, 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 oh, no. Okay. Here's a little camel play place for kids. I like that the camel's face is like, don't sit on me. Also, why does the camel not have ears? And what happened to his feet? Jeez, no wonder he's surly. As smart as the average bear. Bears like humans rely on their intelligence to survive. They are quick learners with a reported mental ability close to that of apes and monkeys. Mother bears or sows teach cubs important skills such as catching fish, turning over rocks to find insects, and how to find the most nutritious plants. Also how to steal picnic baskets so the ranger doesn't find out and play a jaunty tune on a Look, joke. The bear came out after he finished the show at the Country Bear Music Hall, and now he's going back inside. Living primarily in the water, hippos are found in the rivers and lakes and swamps of Sub-Saharan Africa. What it doesn't tell you is hippos also have one of the longest gestational periods of any mammal. And that's because they are so tough and their hide is so thick that nothing wants to mess with them. If you guys like hippos and are interested in learning more about them, even to the point of like hooking yourself into a harness and leaning over a tra train like this and watch him, I highly recommend taking the Wild Africa Trek and Walt Disney World. It's $250, so it's a little pricey, but it's really worth it because you learn a lot of important and interesting information about these creatures. And, well, okay, he's checking his prostate, I guess. These types of monkeys have a giant throat sack that they fill with air. And when they release it, it bellows their call to great distances. And what that does is signifies their territory to other Siamang monkeys around. Look, this is called a greater roadrunner. They finally caught that pesky roadrunner after he was running through the desert. Do you think the coyote helped them catch him? Or they finally just gave up and said, oh, fine. I'm better off here than this coyote keep trying to track me. And as we leave the zoo, there's a peacock. He seems to be going in, but he doesn't understand that the zoo's closed. Hey, Mr. Peacock, the zoo's closed. Eh, he's not listening. Well, that wraps it up for today's exploration of the Los Angeles Zoo. I hope you guys had as much fun here as I did seeing all the animal exhibits. My favorite was seeing the Thomas Thomas because that's such a rare breed of crocodile that you don't see it very often. My least favorite was seeing the snakes because, oh, snakes give me the willies but hopefully you guys enjoyed it i know a lot of people are into reptiles now this trip was filmed over two days and one of the reasons is because i came here late the first day and they closed and i couldn't see everything but the second reason was because of my ticket now on the back of my ticket it says you can return within a 30-day window and you can get two dollars off on a general admission for an adult or a dollar off a child admission and that's pretty smart because say you like me you didn't see every everything or you know you want to come back just because you want to see it again it's a really good move by the Los Angeles Zoo to allow us to do that so good job Los Angeles Zoo now my question to you guys and jump in the comments and let me know what is your favorite zoo or which zoo would you like to see the most for me it's the San Diego Zoo because I've heard of how big it is and how many different types of animals they have and I know they have pandas so I really want to see that so that would be a lot of fun to see that so I'll have to look into that now remember like 
comment, subscribe, tell me where you want me to go next, and we'll see if I can go there. And until I see you guys next time for our next exploration, always remember, keep it kosher. Ah!